then the, <clears throat> the feeling was something that I hope no one would ever experience. That my uh, when I saw that executive order posted on the telephone pole right outside of the high school where I had to take the bus and go home. Every kid got a look at it before they got on the bus. And naturally, there was a bunch, all the kids would stare at me. <laughs> well, I don't know why. I couldn't understand why. Gee, there were a lot of German, uh, second generation German kids, just like me, uh, second generation Japanese and American. And they were, weren't uh, evacuated. They would never receive or orders like that. And we were the only ones, so I didn't know what to think. It just, like a bomb hit me. In um, February, uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, uh, signed the Executive Order 9066, which uh, authorized the removal of the Japanese Americans uh, to, to camp, to the relocation concentration camp. I first went to uh, Jerome, Arkansas, and then on to, uh, no, first went to the Fresno Assembly Center, and then, uh, uh, then on to Arkansas. They started posting uh, signs up all over California that the uh, Japanese had to go into, to, uh, what do they call them? Assembly centers. And so we went into an assembly center in Fresno, stayed there for a few months, and then we were transferred by train to uh, Jerome, Jerome, Arkansas. I spent at least six months there. And uh, I worked as a uh, uh, lumberjack. Never cut a tree down in my life, but I sure learned how to do that. Well, I went from uh, uh, from home to our bus station in. Uh, uh, Marysville, California, where they put us on the train with curtains drawn, guards on the, every car. Uh, we thought we were leaving. I thought we were prisoners, and actually we were. And went to Merced the Assembly Center in Merced. We stayed there uh, for from uh, May from May till December. I was, a. Uh, of course you can do different jobs in the camp. I became a fireman and being a fireman, we had to stay until the camp closed. So my parents and uh, my brothers all went to relocation center in Amachi, Colorado. We went to Tamfran and then from Tamfran, we went to Topaz, Utah way out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> so no, he was, he was in the service, and uh, Itaro and, and uh, Hiraku was in school in St. Louis. So that's three from 11, so that's eight of us, yeah, went to camp. We were in uh, two separate rooms. We had the, the, the barracks in, uh, in uh, Topaz were, A was, uh, was a small room for two people. That's where, uh, my mother and my father stayed, and then we, there was a next room over, uh, I guess it was C, that was a large room. And that, that had about four beds. We, were, we had got that, and then they also, later on, when there was you know, more room available, they gave us the next room over too, which was a large room. So yes. we took half of, the, half of the barrack up anyway. <laughs> first uh, came to camp, we didn't know that there were so many Japanese Americans uh, in, in California. And we were just one center there. Paul Strait, uh, he was in the Army in Texas, 
And um, he, uh, on his way on leave, he stopped by to visit me for uh, three days or so. And uh, he, uh, uh, the, the camp administrators, uh, they asked him to, he wants to stay, uh, asked him to stay with them over there because the lodging and everything was better. But no, he said he wanted to stay with us, so he came and stayed with me and had, had his meals with us. And I remember at one lunchtime, uh, we sat down to lunch and uh, we had squid floating in soy sauce and he couldn't quite stomach that. And for the first time, I realized that our food was lousy. And um, I was an 18-year-old kid there and I just devoured everything. I was so hungry, I would eat everything that was put in front of me without thinking how bad it was. Most of the work of running the camp was done by the internees. And so, you know, anybody who wanted to work could find a job of some sort. So, so I got a job as a, as a milkman and, uh, you know, and delivering ice and milk to the mess halls. <clears throat> and so uh, uh, we would get up early in the morning and, you know, load up the truck with milk and ice and then, you know, visit each of the mess halls and deliver ice and milk. So, so that was my uh, occupation. We were transferred to Hart Mountain, Wyoming. There was not much we could do but except play cards and entertain ourselves during the day. I was an instructor in bookkeeping, so I got the maximum wage of $19 per month. And then in December of 42, uh, the Army had came to recruit volunteers for uh, the Army Language School. They, they needed uh, people, trained people, to, in order to uh, interrogate Japanese prisoner of wars in the Pacific. And so, <coughs> uh, of course, we had to take a test and, uh, and be able to pass this test in order to be accepted. And uh, I was fortunate enough to know enough Japanese, so they, uh, I was uh, accepted. My parents, I told them that I had volunteered and they accepted me and uh, how they felt about that. And uh, they, they said that is entirely up to you because uh, you do what you think is right. The Military Intelligence Service Language School where they were recruiting Japanese Americans to be trained as uh, interrogators, translators in the Japanese language. So uh, I thought, well, maybe this is, this is my chance. So I volunteered for the uh, uh, military intelligence service and, uh, and uh, I, uh, in camp, I volunteered and I told my mother I was gonna be gonna volunteer and uh, she uh, chewed me out by saying, uh, you stupid fool, there's no need to volunteer. We're stuck in camp, we're incarcerated here. Now, if you get drafted, that's different. They were, they were just starting to draft some of, the, some of the people, but with a 4C classification, they were being reclassified 1A, and, uh, and uh, the uh, people in Arkansas were glad that we were being drafted. That means less of their boys get drafted. So, so they were glad to see us, see us get drafted. And so they were changing the classification.